record. Yep. And welcome everyone to our latest winter webinar, which is with Ellie. Thank you so much for doing this, Ellie. Really appreciate you taking the time. That's okay. And Thanks for having me. Of course. And Ellie's going to be talking about becoming a TI. Once she's done, we will open up for questions, which you guys are welcome to post if you are watching this live in the chat. Um, or once Ellie's finished her presentation, we'll invite you to come off mute if you'd like to chat to her as well. So without any further ado, Ellie, I'll hand over to you. Yeah, no problem. Well, like I said, thank you so much for having me, Laura. Um, it's really great to be here chatting to, to you guys today. So thank you so much for attending. Um, and hello to anyone watching this in the future as well on YouTube. Um, I really hope this will be useful. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Ellie Marshall and I'm most likely found at Langer where I'm very fortunate to be a tandem instructor. Um, and when I'm not working at Langer, you'll still probably find me there either working on new skills or jumping with friends. Um, I absolutely love skydiving. That will be quite clear in this presentation. Um, so the aim of today's webinar is to give you guys an overview of my experiences in my journey of becoming a tandem instructor. So I'll talk a little bit about both in terms of preparation for the course, a little bit on what to expect from the course itself, but also the top tips that I've learned from this whole experience and what I wish someone had said to me at the start of the journey as well. Um, little disclaimer, it is quite a recent thing for me. Um, I am, of course, still learning about tandem instructing and with every single jump I do. So I'm by no means an expert, but I'm really hoping that anyone watching this or anyone in the future who looks back on this can take away some useful tips about becoming a tandem instructor or maybe even, I hope, become inspired to be one um, themselves. So that is the aim. So first of all, I will talk a little bit about me and my progression in the sport up until I decided to become a tandem instructor. So I will keep this bit quite brief as I'm sure no one's here to listen to me rabble on about my skydiving career. Um, so I always knew I wanted to be a skydiver. So when I was growing up, I was determined to go skydiving and I did a tandem for my 16th birthday. And I remember quite vividly thinking what a cool job that is. Um, and I knew I wanted to go on and get my A license, but I just didn't realize that in 10 years, I would be the, the tandem instructor. It just didn't even occur to me that that could be a possibility. So in 2014, um, my first year of university, I started walking towards working towards my A license. I wasn't particularly natural at it. it took me about six months to get my A license with many jumps repeated. Um, but then the next five years of my jumping career, they weren't particularly eventful. Um, I just had a lot of time jumping with friends and developing skills, competing in FS wingsuiting, um, was lucky enough to be on some free flying and wingsuit record attempts. Um, but also the very bottom left photo, uh, there's my photo of my first team where I came last at Rookie in uh, 2015 at FS Nationals. So it just shows that it's taken a while to, to get to this point. And the key thing to take away from it is to not rush with anything. Uh, just take time to enjoy everything first before deciding you're ready for your next step in your skydiving career. But in 2021, 2022, um, I really was inspired by some of my friends and fellow jumpers at Langer who went on to get that tandem instructor ratings. Uh, particular shout out to Kaylee and Emily for that, who were doing it for the girls, showing that uh, it, it was definitely possible. So I spoke to some instructors at Langer, registered some interest, and then I put in lots of ground preparation, which I'll come on to later. Um, and so in 2023, last year, I became a tandem basic instructor in February, and then I got my tandem instructor rating in April last year. So first of all, why should you become a tandem instructor? Well, first of all, for me, it is incredibly rewarding. Like I said, I always will remember the person who took me for my first skydive, my tandem instructor. It, it's an incredible thing to do to be able to take people and take them for their first skydive. It's such a memorable experience for them. And it, it really is amazing to share that with them. Um, some of the most rewarding jumps for me are particularly when people skydive for charity because they can be quite nervous about doing it and they're doing it for an amazing cause. And quite often you have to coach them through it a little bit, just give them a bit of reassurance. Um, but the feeling that they have afterwards when they've completed it is so rewarding, it's amazing. Second of all, it's a good challenge. Um, it is hard work, it's long jumping days and it is tiring and it does require a level of fitness, which I'll discuss a bit later. Um, 
but there's new knowledge to it. It requires you to learn new things, new learn new emergency drills. It's a whole different parachute system, even learning different exits. So everything you've learned up until this point in your skydiving career is useful. But then on top of that, you've now got to learn so much more because, of course, the customer safety is the key priority. So it is a good challenge. Uh, the next one, it's fun. <laughs> People joke that doing tandems are not fun. But honestly, um, I, I swear that some of the best jumps I've ever had, when I've been barely laughing in the plane with like my uh, videographers and fellow tandem instructors, when there's a really good group and a, like a big lively camaraderie that happens, it is so much fun. And then we land and then after a day of jumping, we look and then we're like, that was such a good day of jumping. And it's really good to share that with some of my friends who also work in the sport. It really is great. It's all about making the customer's day a 10 out of 10 experience. It's definitely a customer service role being a tandem instructor. Um, so you've got to have a smile on your face, but it, it really is incredible and, and you do get so much out of it. It creates opportunity. Tandem instructors are required all around the world, especially in some amazing tourist spots. So with a tandem instructor rating, you can travel and, and you can really explore and, and do some incredible things with that. And finally, this one's got an asterisk, but it would be remiss of me to not mention money because, of course, this is a reason why people do choose to become a tandem instructor, because they think it's a great career and something really fun to do. Um, and that is definitely valid. However, it shouldn't be the sole reason because there's so much more to tandem instructing. It can be challenging. It can be difficult. Um, and your heart does really need to be in it because it's not just about your jump. In fact, it's barely about your jump at all. What we're doing is creating an amazing experience for people who are coming to do a tandem skydive. So it doesn't matter if you've learned some amazing new flip twist in the tunnel or you want to try a cool new layout exit, because of course it's not about your skydiver. You are giving someone an incredible experience. Um, so it's, it's for them. So therefore it shouldn't be about the money, but of course that's the reason why some people do choose to get that tandem instructor rating. So, bit of boring bit, official requirements to attend a tandem instructor course. So these are all available in the ops manual. So I won't read them all out here. It's just for your reference to look back on. Um, and some of these are a lot more obvious than others. So I think it's quite known that you have to have a minimum of 800 descents and eight hours of free full time in order to attend a tandem instructor course. However, I do just want to point out some of these lesser known ones. Um, because I think it's quite nice to, to talk about these instead of the more commonly well-known ones that these are available um, for you guys to go check out. Um, so first of all, here on the bottom left, you can see one of the official requirements is to have a written recommendation from your chief instructor. Now, this one's quite interesting because one of the qualities of a good instructor is to always set a good example. So if you are thinking about becoming a tandem instructor in the future, if you are a jumper now who is a bad influence on others, makes dangerous decisions, um, both on jumping and socially at the drop zone, I definitely recommend that you start thinking about how to change to become a better example, um, because it's definitely a good way to start preparation now to set an example for others and be someone who people can look up to. Because at the end of the day, a tandem instructor is the first person that many people who come for a skydive will meet. And that will be their first introduction to the sport. So of course we want to set a good example. Um, another one I want to touch on is the, the top one in the middle here, which is one of the requirements is you have to make a descent acting as a student tandem skydiver within your basic instructor probationary period. Now, this one is really interesting for me. I think it's really important because not only does it give you an awareness of the parachute system itself, but it also makes you realize what it is like to be a student skydiver. So I think personally, it's really important that if we are ever teaching something or giving a brief to someone, we need to understand what we are actually briefing really well ourselves. So therefore, if we are to be briefing a landing position or an exit position, I think it's important that we have experience in that ourselves, because of course it's different being the instructor to the student, the exit and the, the landing positions are different. Also other things such as knowing where to pay attention when fitting a harness. I've done a few uh, tandems now, and personally I, I know where the harness can be a little bit more uncomfortable than other places. So I will try and help that when I am harnessing a student. 
Um, so that's definitely something to do. And finally, the column on the right, you'll see the top two are about the equipment. So you need to be familiar with tandem equipment and know how to pack. So don't be fooled thinking that you can become a tandem instructor and you never have to pack again. Um, some drop zones are incredibly fortunate. So such as Langer, where we have an incredible team of packers and I'm so grateful. But it's really important that you understand the deployment system fully and you understand the kit. So with good understanding and strong knowledge of the kit comes confidence and confidence is something I'll discuss a little bit later. It's really important to have that knowledge. So definitely chat to your packers, chat to your riggers. They, those guys are incredible and they know a lot and they, they can really, really help. So the tandem instructor course itself, I'll chat a little bit about this. A lot of this information is available for you guys to go have a look at as well. So I'll only briefly skim this. Um, but this is a, the tandem instructor course is a coaching course. So throughout the week, there are some incredibly useful lessons and lectures. But there is, of course, a standard that you need to be at to even attend this course. So you need to be confident with your suspended harness drills and all of your emergency procedures going into it. These are something which will be practiced and performed every day on the course. And you do have a practical assessment in your briefs. It needs to be of a, a good standard. And you do also have to do a written examination as well. Um, so preparation is key and we will come on to this shortly. Um, of course, we have the jump stage as well. Um, so you do between nine and 12 jumps on your tandem course with set objectives on each jump. So you'll have four bag jumps getting used to the system because the first time you ever jump a tandem system will be on your course. Um, as you can see in this, this I, unfortunately I don't have video, so I've just got screenshots, but I look quite nervous. Um, and then the live, you do five live jumps once you pass the, those bag jumps. Um, with a B licensed skydiver who acts as the student. So I was lucky enough to take my friend Keely, who was amazing and very calming. Um, and as you can see on this photo of the right, the course is so much fun. This was the first live jump I ever did. And you can see there's a smile on both of our faces, relieved that it's going well, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but it's, it's the, the course is a great sense of camaraderie and excitement. Um, you're all in it together and there really is no feeling comparable to the first ever time you do a tandem skydive. Um, so it's definitely something to look forward to. Um, but with so much ground preparation, you will go into the course a lot more confident. So preparation really, really is key. So based on that, what can be done to prepare? So, as you can see from this photo, this is me in my dining room, um, practicing a nice big arch. Um, so, what can be done to prepare for your tandem instructor course? First of all, I think it's really important to be con current and confident in your own flying skills. So, being able to fly in any orientation and just understand relative wind, airflow, just general skydiving knowledge is really important. Because one of the key parts of a tandem skydive is the exit and the necessity to be able to set the drogue in a stable body position and to not rush this. And a lot of that comes with confidence in your flying ability to just get used to doing any form of jumps um, and just build it up slowly. Just don't rush into it is, is really, really key. You can never be too experienced or too rehearsed in anything. So I definitely recommend just doing lots of jumps and getting used to it. Additional coach and instructor ratings help so much as well, because being able to deliver a good brief to this tandem student is key for their safety and that ability to communicate and teach can really be developed through coaching and other forms of instructing. So I definitely recommend becoming an FS coach. If you're looking at becoming a tandem instructor, work on delivering briefs and just work on communicating because it's such an underrated skill and it's so, so, so important. The next one is really, really important for me. So I was very lucky at Langer um, to have really great mentorship through the instructor training program. And I strongly recommend seeking good mentorship and having people who you can turn to and look up to and get advice from, because it's so important to, to seek out advice if you're not confident on something or if you want a tip or, or a different technique, it's so great to, to chat with others and, and get really good mentor mentorship. So seek a safe training environment. I will chat a little bit about this later on and find people and good teachers who, who will help you through it. I really recommend that. This next one is the most important one for me, ground preparation. 
like I said, you can never do too much going into your tandem course. So it's so important to get that preparation in. There was a stage building up to my tandem course where my boyfriend and I would go out for dinner and then randomly he would just shout a tandem emergency at me. And then I would just have to recite um, the, the tandem drill um, back to him and same with my housemate. So, so that was really great because it was just teaching me that muscle memory getting it built into my head um you can practice so much on the ground because the first time you ever jump that tandem system will be on your course so that's a little bit intimidating but there's so much you can do to prepare for that so even wearing the kit and moving around the mock-up or the plane that's so important you can practice your suspended harness drills so much even small things such as which never occurred to me but it was a really good tip just practicing hooking up a student and then tucking away the excess of the harness whilst wearing gloves because I was practicing it so much just getting used to it but then I was like oh I'm gonna have to be wearing gloves and it's just something else to think about because on your first live jumps you will be nervous but if you are well rehearsed in these drills the first tandems you do, it would just be like muscle memory straight away. You'll know exactly what to do because you'll have prepared for it so much. Um, and another big one you can practice is harnessing. So go to your, your PTO, grab a tandem harness and practice harnessing all of your friends. I really recommend it. It helps to be a lot more confident about it. And finally, build fitness. So fitness, fitness is very important to be a tandem instructor. There is no denying that. The equipment is a little bit heavier than normal sport equipment and it can be quite physical and it's definitely noticeably harder to flare a tandem canopy, but it is not impossible. I'll chat a little bit more about this in a, in a second, but before the course, in order to prepare, just get going to the gym multiple times a week. Something that I did, which I think is possible to do um, anywhere. I borrowed some spare toggles from a friend and I had some old um, line. And what I did was I rigged up a pulley system to practice flaring with some weights on the bottom. Um, and it was a bit sad, just stood in my kitchen hallway, just flaring over and over again. But the more work you put into something before a course, the easier it will be and you'll get so much more out of it. So get in the time now if you want to be a tandem instructor get in the gym it, it will pay off I promise the final slide I've got today is tips from my personal experience of becoming a tandem instructor so the first one I have is the culture of the learning environment is crucial so like I've said already I was incredibly lucky with my learning environment um, Langer was great um, because it was such a safe space to learn, but it also strongly promoted safety. There was no cutting corners and I really did have great mentorship. Um, over and over again, I was practice, 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 and it, it feels like a lot. But like I said, you can never practice too much because it really helps dissipate any nerves or doubts you have going into the course. Um, and with that great mentorship comes the next one to communicate with other tandem instructors to share tips, techniques, and experiences. So skydivers are a great bunch. We know this, we keep coming back. We love it so much, but we want to lift each other up and support each other. So if you are having any doubts about anything or not feeling too confident, ask people, get advice. There is an abundance and wealth of knowledge of experience at all drop zones in the UK. So get good mentorship. If in doubt, speak to people, get their experiences because everyone has different techniques. But if you have all the different techniques on your head, you can find one that works best for you and you'll then develop your own ones, which you can go on to other people and tell them as well and share your experiences. So the next one, we talked about fitness earlier, but I just wanted to touch a bit more on this as a takeaway point, just to emphasize that it is not impossible to achieve the necessary level of fitness. So when I first uh, started skydiving, there weren't too many female tandem instructors around and I had heard, oh, you need to be too stronger. It's not for you, etc." cetera. Um, luckily there's so much less of that now. But what I want to just emphasize is 
whether you're female or not, it's normal for everyone at the beginning to find it physically tiring. It is just tiring and it's something that you're not used to. So there are ways of coping around the tiredness and the fitness. Obviously, like I said, prepare for it, get in the gym, build up that strength that you have to go into it. But also there's tips and techniques, things that I've learned from other people related to that last comment. So first of all, you can conserve your energy for the landing. This is the most important bit. But if you're feeling a bit tired, you don't need to spiral the canopy down the whole time. You can rest your arms, you can relax, you can save your energy to prepare for that landing because of course the landing is key. Um, I was quite nervous about making sure I had really good flares. Obviously it's so important and it's one of the key things that you have to get right. But flaring for me for sure is a mix of strength and technique. It applies to all genders, all shapes and sizes. You can practice flaring. It is something you can practice. And it's something that you can look back on as well and improve every time. Um, so I definitely believe it's, it's strength and technique. And based on that last point as well, which connects to the next one, for exits and landings, watch back all of your videos not from a narcissistic point of view. I very rarely watch a video and go, oh, look at me, I look so cool. I'm normally like, oh, what, what am I doing with my face? Um, but more like, a, oh, wow, I can do that better. Perhaps I threw that drogue a bit too soon, etc. cetera. Um, from a development point of view, it's so important that you can self debrief, but not even just debriefing yourself. You can take your videos to other instructors, ones who are more experienced, and you can compare videos and get advice and see what you can do to improve, to get better. So like I was saying about the fitness with the, the landings and, and flaring, it's massively about technique as well. Keep practicing it and then show your videos to someone and work with them to see how you can improve that and, and develop that and get really, really good landings. Um, so that's really important. And finally, a big one for me is confidence in your ability is so important. So I really believe that becoming a TI is amazing for anyone. But one thing I do think is you really do need to be assertive because you need to be able to make the correct decisions at the correct points and you need to be confident in any decisions that you make. Say, for example, if a student isn't ready to jump um, or in the event of an emergency, when you have to resort to one of your emergency procedures, you need to be assertive in the decision you make. But this, for me, comes down to ground preparation, like I discussed, because if you put in all of that work on the ground, um, when it comes to it and you need to to rely on your emergency procedures if they are well drilled it it will come to you so easily and that muscle memory will come back so i get a bit nervous when i'm not current or if i'm doing something new that is completely natural but we need to make sure that as tandem instructors we are the best we can be to deliver the best customer experience and the most safe one for our tandem students so based on that we absolutely need to make sure that we are well prepared and assertive with any decisions that we need to make during the jump. So the key thing to remember in all of this is for a tandem student, it's not cheap for them, first of all, but it's incredibly special for them as well. I mean, I like I said, I wanted to do a skydive from as long as I can remember. And so many tandem students who I've met also say that. So in a weird way, we, we are basically making people's dreams come true by, a, by taking them for their skydives. So based on that, we need to be the best we can be. Um, we need to deliver a 10 out of 10 customer service experience and also keep them safe. It's so important. So if you put the work in on the ground, I promise you, you will get so much out of it because I genuinely can honestly say I really, really love being a tandem instructor. Um, as you can see from this next slide, there is so many genuine smiling faces there and <laughs> not one fake one. <laughs> I, um, it's safe to say I definitely wear my heart on my sleeve and you can see from my face whether I'm enjoying something or not. And uh, all of them are 100% really genuine smiles. So if you are thinking about becoming a tandem instructor, I can't recommend it enough but just make sure you put in the ground preparation and all of the work and you will get so much out of it. 
So thank you very much for listening. Um, and if you have any questions, fire away. And if not, like I said, seek mentorship. There's definitely more experienced people than me. However, I will always be happy to help answer any questions anyone has about it. So just come find me or message me on Facebook. Thank you. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you so much, Ellie. That was brilliant. And it's so cool to see like all the work you put into it. The fact that you made a pulley system at home. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, and I used to another one I had was um I recorded all the tandem emergency procedures to myself on my phone. So then when I used to go on long runs, I'd just be listening to myself repeat the drills over and over. And that's it was so yeah, cool. it's quite sad, but it, it helps. It really helps. <laughs> I think it is incredible and it's the same with everything if you want to be good at it you need to put the work in and I think it's so easy to see the end product like for me yeah. I watch you do tandems I film you doing them and I'm like god she makes it look so easy and it's amazing <laughs> to hear about everything that's gone in behind the scenes to get to this point um I, I don't think much to your nights out with Roundy though they sound a bit nasty. <laughs> they sound a bit boring <laughs> If I went out for a, a date night with Chris, he started shouting AFF emergencies at me. I don't think I'd be too pleased. But, um... It's a floating drogue in tow. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit sad. And, and then if one of us says something wrong, we're like, what, what, what? No, but then we, we, we've the got them drilled. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Randy says, bag out, bag out. <laughs> no. Uh, Rianne says, you're a badass. Um, loud Chimera Girl, not me, the other one, says, uh, what's your favourite thing about being a tandem instructor the I can definitely say the best thing is when you have people who don't look like they're enjoying it for the start <laughs> so I think it's it's not it's not uncommon that you'll meet people who definitely appear nervous that is quite common um and for me one of the best things about it is not necessarily the physical work that you have to put into it but sometimes in the plane and, and Laura you'll know this as well from being a videographer some people all of a sudden they go really quiet and we quite often get the question do you have refusals and then when people ask that you start thinking oh they're clearly you know think, getting a little bit nervous at this point and then you sort of end up switching and obviously there's banter that goes around uh, with a skydive but with some people you just have to read the room a bit and be like oh, okay I can help you through this and then you switch and then you really talk them through it and you basically kind of coach them through it in a way you tell them about all the safety procedures they know this from the briefs anyway but you just really help them through it and then when they land the the smile is just incredible like when um we've had a good landing and the videographer comes over and they're so happy and then you're trying to sort the gear out but they just turn around or they would just want to give you the biggest hug they're like thank you thank you thank you it's just so nice and they've had a few where they definitely don't want to go on the exit luckily um ev like everyone's gone we've not had any refuse like I've not had any refusals I've been really lucky um but I've had a few where you you feel like they don't want to go or they'll try and like hold onto the plane as you're going down towards the door. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> Remember, keep, keep hold of your harness. Uh, but those ones are the ones who get the most out of it. And it gives me the most pleasure as well, because the stoke in people's faces that when they've overcome something and they've challenged themselves to do it and then gone on to succeed, it, it, it's amazing, especially when people do it for charity. Like I mentioned, that's that's really special the charity ones can be really positive and amazing yeah. and emotional also, we, I was <laughs> gonna say really emotional as well yeah. um I imagine that that probably ties into it but what is the most difficult thing for you about being a tandem instructor it's the most difficult thing for me at first was the nerves um it's hard because you you can't be or you can't be seen to be nervous as a tandem instructor because when people come for their skydives they're nervous and then it's like oh okay <laughs> when you start it's like oh me too <laughs> but you can't show that but then with that I find what I've mentioned about ground preparation is really important because I think it's natural to be a little bit nervous at first you of course you don't want to be scared forever that's not ideal as a tandem instructor it might not be for you at that point um but anything new it's okay to be apprehensive about but with those nerves the key thing is that you have the confidence to know that you are capable of doing it and you know the drills you know everything you've done the exits it's gone well um so that all just comes to ground preparation as well um like I said if it's something new I think it's completely natural to be nervous or maybe not nervous but apprehensive um but 
knowing you've put the work in and you're ready that's that's the key thing there yeah so much of it is about that preparation isn't it and you have it as a yeah. sports jumper as well like nobody's going yeah. up and thinking oh god what happens if because you already <laughs> yeah. know you've already prepared for it um which is really exactly. really cool uh, you mentioned something earlier on in the slides, which I thought was really cool that you'd highlighted it. One of the prerequisites for being a TI is to get the recommendation of a chief instructor. And you talked about how important it is to be a good example. I know there's a few people on this Zoom who are working towards becoming a tandem instructor at the moment. What would you say have been like the have you made any big changes in in how you behave around the drop zone or like have you found that skills development has been a big part of it like can you tell us more about how you've become a good example yeah so it's it's a hard one because like I try I wouldn't necessarily associate myself as a good example but then when you have a lot of people say come along and say oh thank you so much for doing this you're showing that it's possible to do that's that's really great um and it does feel like you're you're opening doors for other people um but when it comes to being a good example I think just being seen to be a, a helpful person around the drop zone can help so much as well um being available to give advice to anyone and just always be willing to assist so one big thing for me was as a basic instructor um you can't do the tandem instructing jobs but you can still get a lot of practice in um by helping out with the ground you're able to deliver briefs at that point you can harness you can just be seen to be helping people and just be a real asset to the drop zone um because I've like I said I've been incredibly lucky at Langer to have the support I've received from them they've given me so much in my training and I think it's just important to be able to give back to them as well um, just by helping out where possible uh, being able to assist new people and definitely at working on skills and development like I said like coaching is such a good way just to build those communication skills and work on being able to to have good methods of instruction and and I think really do think coaching would be a great way of getting into that as well um so I definitely recommend if anyone is thinking about becoming a tandem instructor in the future start now start preparing just being there being helpful being yeah. being present exactly um, just being know, a good person <laughs> just, yeah just yeah. being there like you absorb so much for being in that environment and and being yeah. a positive person around the drop zone is always going to bode well yeah, exactly. Be a nice, smiley, welcoming face, because like I said, it is a customer service role. So if you're there to help people out, then yeah, it's you're doing you're doing everything you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned as well uh, in your presentation, which again was really cool. You were talking about it doesn't matter kind of who you are, your physical makeup, your your gender, things like that. It is possible possible to become a tandem instructor. It's still very clear that there are fewer female tandem instructors than there are male do you feel like the barriers to becoming a tandem instructor as a female are now gone and it's completely open or do you think there are any challenges that if there are any females here thinking of doing it it's it's just worth talking about I think and having it out yeah there. of course yeah no it's um I would say there's definitely still barriers. They are coming down a lot but it's interesting that we talk about it as a gender because for me, I wouldn't necessarily see it as a gender thing, but it it can be associated that way. So for me, what um, what I do see often from a physical point of view, tandem instructing would perhaps be you could, people would say it would be easier if you are taller for example because you can have more control of the airflow uh, with more limbs <laughs> you can uh, basically have more to give to the airflow um, if a tandem student is not necessarily behaving so that's definitely one way of looking at it and then I guess with strength with that it's oh you be bigger you can be stronger etc but there are people out there who I know who are tandem instructors, whether they're male or female, who are five foot two and they are doing an incredible job. They they will take people who are so much taller than them. Um, so it's it's definitely there's fewer women out there, um, but it has been proven and people are making it very obvious that anyone can do it if they want to set their mind to it. And that's really, really important. I think something which is really great to see now is there seems to be momentum building. Um, very, like 10 years ago, I, there was not many female tandem instructors in the UK at all, but then now looking around, I'm seeing them pop up everywhere. 
and then at courses like you quite often see two at a tandem instructor course now which is amazing so I think with this momentum we have it's definitely going in the right direction and it's not necessarily becoming a gender thing as such anymore it's okay well how can we make this more adaptive uh, for say a slightly smaller tandem instructor they can find ways which will deal with it they will find exits that work for them and something that comes down to that as well is um, what I was talking about sharing tips and techniques with people I watch some of the some of the guys in the plane just absolutely brute force tighten the harness and I'm like God, can't do that <laughs> I, I, I can land a parachute sure and I can flare but like I say that comes down to technique but um, one of the one of the tandem instructors just gave me a simple technique about just rotating the the harness as you tighten it and then I tried that and all of a sudden it was like that's incredible that's such a small simple thing that I didn't think about before but then they were able to show me that so it's not necessarily about gender um, but I think it's still important that we talk about this and we we get it going because of course we want more female tandem instructors I'm all for it <laughs> I think it's great um, but it's just something that we can think about and get the conversation going about how can we make it more diverse for everyone and what can we put in place to help anyone from any background any size uh, who wants to do it become a tandem instructor. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And I love that. There's so many things and provisions in place to help anybody who wants to do anything they want to do in our sport. You know, it's not just about being a tandem instructor. If you want to go skydiving, like it's such an amazing community that will just look at it and go, OK, this is the barrier. Let's work out how to bring that down. Let's yeah, make it possible. Exactly. For you. Overcoming barriers is key. Yeah, for sure. But also, I think so is normalizing, you know, seeing female tandem instructors or seeing people of different shapes and sizes and different backgrounds at the drop zone. It's just so, so important. So yeah. no, that's really cool. Um, we've got one more question <laughs> uh, uh, from someone called Chris Cook. Um, <laughs> he says, your determination when learning is so impressive, uh, which oh. I completely agree with. You're getting so many lovely comments. Um, Woohoo, thank you. You're a badass. What a legend. Thank you, Smells. Uh, lots and lots of stuff coming through. But um, Chris's question may be the most important so far. He says, more importantly, who is your favourite camera flyer? <laughs> I'm not going to start a war now, Kiki. <laughs> I think it, it's a fun question, though, because there is clearly an interaction between tandem instructor and videographer, and you've mentioned kind of the, the team it's, camaraderie. Exactly. So it's so some people say oh it's great when you don't have video but I love it like so from a few perspectives like first of all Laura you're great with it because it gives me like two minutes just to, to chill out because you love talking as well so it's great <laughs> so you can just chat to people um but yeah the camaraderie when you have a video before it's your your team like when you do a tandem skydive there's three of you uh, there's the student there's a the videographer and there's the instructor and together it's such a good team and it is just so much fun um and the the grinning faces we have at each other um even Laura and I once a great best example I have we uh, we played a game once where this, we got the student involved where we were uh, playing uh, like charades with the face and we had to mimic the face to each other uh, so <laughs> the student whispers. pulled yeah fishy whispers so that was it so the student pulled a face and then Laura had to pull it back to me then I had to guess the face and the so student was absolutely fun. loving it they were so on board with it and it, it really made their experience so yeah teamwork is great amazing Ellie you've been fantastic we're going to run out of time so sadly yes. but everything is recorded <laughs> thank you so much for doing this no you problem. are amazing thank, <laughs> thank you, you.